in three, two, five, seven, eleven. eleven. Welcome to uh, fucking Prison Blade Gaming, everybody. My name is Hawk Johansson, aka your new boyfriend. And uh, and welcome back to Ghosts of Salt Marsh, episode uh, whatever the fuck this is. Episode your death. Episode uh, your mom. Boom roasted. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's a, we've been, a joke that people still do. So for the past 30 minutes, we've been goofing around, waiting for everybody to show up. So please forgive us if we're a little We're still unfocused. missing somebody. Would you, Quinn, do, please do not interrupt me again. Okay, sorry. All right. Last time, in the last episode published on YouTube, y'all got three missions from completely different groups around Saltmarsh, each one representing a different political facet or organization that is trying to slowly take control somehow. Because that's what political organizations do. In the end, the party decided to go talk to the orcs up at the Western Keep, a good dis about half a day's travel to the east, near the foot of the mountains. Then, in, a, in the stream-only bonus episode, the party encountered a Mind Flayer named Zangrator, who told the party their fates, and then they all got wasted on Whimsy Wine. Well, most hey, of them got what? wasted on Whimsy Wine. So that's what you guys were doing. Yeah, Shinzo could only talk in meows. It was great. <laughs> and he, he pissed out eggs. And a nest. It, a nest, too? Yeah, okay, the full I guess thing. I missed that bit of him, though. <laughs> oh, dear God. Point is, it was both amusing and traumatizing. Yes. In today's um, episode... Mainly amusing. It is, the, it is the next day. Chaos has worn off. The effects of the wine have faded. And the party is now back together and ready to go talk to some f fucking orcs. Hey! So, the question now comes to this. How will the party be proceeding with this? Well, it's kind of quite simple. Just go and talk to them. Well, yeah, but it's a half a day's travel away. Are you taking horses? Are you taking a cart? Would... Well, if I had to say anything, it would be a cart-horse combination. Well, I am first going to get, uh, Leirai, the Green Warden, see if he wants to come along. He's not all that interested in coming along, but... He understands, you know, what y'all are trying to do. Well, the invitation is there if he wants it. Yeah. I can probably ride Bigglesby. Uh, well, no. He is large. Are you a... Yeah. What's a... I'm the knight. I am not the one that can actually, like, get bonuses for riding on my kaiju. Yeah. You can ride him, but you'll have to jump off in battle so he can work. Yeah, understandable. That's pretty good he doesn't eat the next group of orcs that we encounter. Oh, he prefers wood. He does. He's, he's a giant carpenter bee. Rex. Wouldn't that make him a wasp? Look. Don't fucking question me, okay? <laughs> we had a long no, conversation. No, I was just about to say, like, I... we, we, we had a long conversation when our characters first met about this. So you guys are getting a cart. Uh, well, where could we find one exactly? Yeah. It's a train in town. 
probably find one over at the stables or the other stables. Are those stables over there? Where? One to the north. I don't know where the stables two to are. The south. All right, follow me. And Hawk, I will lead them to the cheapest of the three stables that I just made up. You got it. All right. As you arrive at the cheapest of the three stables, you enter to find a rickety old cart and a couple horses. And a very old man nodding off against the wall. As the party enters, he... Uh, oh. Welcome, welcome to the to the Creaky Wheel, your best uh, place, your first and only stop for transportation needs. Arr. I see that this one is a bit of a interesting lad. He is a very old man, balding with a half crown of gray hair hanging from the back of his head, starting at his ears. I bet a lot of lasses are into him. <laughs> I'm saying this out loud as if to be charismatic with the guy. He is absolutely not interested. Uh, well, that won't work. Okay. Uh, so... We are looking to get a cart and a couple of animals to pull the said cart. Yes. We. I was wondering, how much would that be exactly? How much? Especially you for. Paying? Well, we are the. Well, the salt marshes heroes that. Help protected it from the Swahogan attack recently, and, uh, well, we could go for probably as a total grand of, uh, character, give me a second. Well, the cart, the cart is ten gold total, unless you want to rent it, in which case it's three gold a day. Mm. Ten gold for that be... rickety thing. Uh, well, how about five gold <laughs> for permanent purchase, along with ten gold total for the two horses, for the his heroes eye... of the town. His eyes narrow. Thirty gold each for the horses. They may not be in the best shape, but they'll get you there. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask, can I look at the horses to see if they actually look healthy? <laughs> uh, roll animal handling. Oh. Damn it. I thought it was going to be insight. They look fine. Uh, they look like good horses. You know, I don't really know horses that well. Yeah, Shenzo, they are not good horses. They're... They're, they look quite old. <laughs> just, 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 I was like, me let this. me just see. Okay. Uh, Shinzo the... nudges them on the shoulder and goes, they're not good. They're not good. And then leans back. Mm. How about... Uh, 15 gold per horse. 25. Discord not catch that. 25 gold each. Mm, how about 20? Roll persuasion. The man narrows his eyes as he looks you up and down and looks over the party. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 50 gold for the whole kit and caboodle. And I'll help you get them <laughs> set up. Well... That's a fine deal, ain't it? As uh, so, uh, Sorok would nudge the group. As he would indeed actually take it out of his own pocket. Hand over 50 gold. And there you go. 
You uh, within the hour, the horses have been led out, hooked up to the cart, and the party is ready to set out. Uh, let's just need actually to know. gather some food for these things because I don't know how long they have. Now, well, I'm assuming you'll okay, take care of food. Yeah. Uh, what is the party lineup within the cart going to be like? Who's driving? How long? Is Are the rest of you in the back or walking alongside? Well, Sorok will be riding in the back because, well, he can't really drive these vehicles. I mean, he could, ri he could navigate with a freaking boat, but he can't navigate with a cart. All right. Everyone else? Grath would most likely be in the cart. Uh, Helica would be stretching her long legs, walking beside the cart, polishing the pommel of her kopesh. Cool, cool. All right. I guess uh, Shinzo I'll... would be driving it. <laughs> Congratulations, Shinzo. You've made it to the most prestigious role any player can hope to achieve in a party. You're the general. driver. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that means a getaway driver, too. When we rob somebody. Mm -hmm. And I drift. <laughs> I got my uh, good audio working again. Thank good. Amo will spend like an hour and a half in the sky, then like an hour and a half to give Bigglesby a break in the cart, and then back up in the sky. Just keeping an eye out. Alright. Uh, roll me perception while you're up there. Uh, should I roll for Bigglesby as well? Yeah, go ahead. No, I, no. We'll say Picklesby is aiding you, so you can get per, uh, advantage. Okay, then. Oh, then you definitely saw something. Uh, what he saw was a group of uh, bugbears about two hours away trying to set up an ambush on the road. Thanks to him spotting it, the party is easily able to avoid the ambush entirely by going off the road and then coming back on it, away from them. I'm going lunch. <laughs> By a little after lunchtime... Let me actually find some new vac. Let me see here. By lunchtime, the party has, you know... The party has arrived at the designated location. As they come out of the woods, they begin to hear the sounds of a bustling town. Sorok would actually just start moving to the front next to uh, Shinzo at this point. As the party approaches through the woods, you can see a very nice looking keep. Well, Pokemon mighty fine place. Uh, what's your picture? Just hang on just a sec. And folks at home, this is what they're looking at. As you walk up, you can see that the what would have been the moat of this ancient keep has been drained out or evaporated. However it happened, the water is long gone, leaving a large cliff-like plateau surrounded by a huge valley around it. It doesn't show it on the picture I posted, but there is a large wooden bridge, well constructed, surprisingly, leading from one side to another. All along the parapets and walls of the keep, you can see orcs patrolling, holding large bows. They look like long bows, but they don't look like they're well made, or well maintained for that matter. 
as you start approaching the sound you start feeling rain on your cheeks and looking up you can see the clouds coming becoming overcast oh there is some as the rain starts coming down I start wanting to kill our Discord bot for not being able to load any of these soundtracks. The Why urge of killing more? rises. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there might be a murder here tonight. <laughs> Me on this robot. <laughs> Wait, is killing a robot really a murder? It is if, they uh, if it is sentient. Yeah. Anyway. I mean... A robot can't technically die. So. Anyway. <laughs> As the party approaches, they are immediately accosted by a, a couple of orcs next to the bridge. Oh, who goes there? As uh, Sorok stands up, speaking in orcish at this point, Sorok Goldeneye, captain of the... Black Ark Pirates. And some friends. And friends. They look at you for a moment. Briefly seem to question whether they should do something about you. We're here to chat with your boss, per se. If... That's perfectly fine by her, him or her. They blink. Which one? The chieftain, obviously. Which one? What do you mean, which one? There's the one that leads you all. Like, literally the, you know, the head chief. The war chief, I guess you call him? One of them steps, Look, one of them steps forward and raises a hand. We have four chiefs and one war leader. Oh. It'd be the war leader. He's not seeing visitors look, right now. Look, I'm a... Look, I just lost my dad from... Swahagen, let's just say. <laughs> and we'll... We'll walk in with this group, that group of people down south that helped us out. Particularly a bunch of orc pirates who literally washed up to shore after losing their ship. You know, our tribe, in a sense. So, we would like to talk to the war leader un under the, for the, on their behalf, potentially to see a diplomatic method of probably d discussing a problem that the people that saved my hide, well, has. They look at each other, look back at you. Sorry for your loss. He's not saying anyone right now. Well, is there any one of your chieftains that are willing to see us? They look at each other and kind of murmur, murmur quietly between each other for a moment. I mean, I could take a the weakest one if that's necessary. They think about it. They quietly consider their options. Shinzo's gonna get off of the Look, wall. Walk these up, lads, get right they are not like me. And try to intimidate them. Just by sheer will. Like, not even saying anything. <laughs> just stare them down. Just stare them down eye to eye, like, close enough to fucking kiss them. But, like, just, yeah. Uh, look, my friends, <laughs> they not, they don't think like me. They think more... Quinn, well, Quinn, hang on. Let Shinzo have his moment. Okay, go <laughs> ahead. It's just I was trying to add a little funniness to the uh, roleplay. I gotcha. Got a... Alright. As, as Shinzo just steps up and stares at them... The orcs start shifting back and forth, unnerved by his unbreaking stare. 
and eventually they just step aside. Which didn't. And Shinzo exactly. looks back at the group. See? It's easy. And then walks in. He just shrugs as he's like, <laughs> okay. Uh, as we're walking in, Wait, if I made this, like... it... Shinzo. As so, so Rock just runs up to his walk hey, with it's, Shinzo. It's me walking up to the keep. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey. <laughs> Uh, I would like to ask the guards if any of the four chiefs would be available to meet with us. They they nod. Uh, all four of them are probably around the keep somewhere. The war chief's the only one who doesn't want to talk. Where might I find one of them, specifically? They think about it. <coughs> well, Chief Scrag is probably in the armory. He likes to make things. Chief Bells is probably up on the tower. Chief Crack is in the training yard, obviously. And Chief Zarn is, a uh, well, don't know where she is. <laughs> and, uh, out of character, what was that second one again? Bells. He was Bells. Scrag, Bells. Crack. crack, Bells, Crack, and... Zard. Zard. Yep. I, I'm just gonna say this. Sorog's ear just lifts up a little when he heard she. <laughs> like, uh, oh. You're gonna well. have... You'll have to fight Shun for her. <laughs> <laughs> already the disgusting. waifu collector. We've already discussed it. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we did. I'm just messing with you, Shun, you know that. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, keep Bigglesby grounded and on a rope while we're within the keep. As you uh, as you walk past them with Bigglesby, they actually notice the giant dinosaur, and their first reaction is, What the fuck is that? Uh, that's my it's companion's Bigglesby. pet! They, it's Bigglesby. They turn and like look back and forth with utter horror and shock. And finally just like, whatever. Icarus what, will look at that one and say, you, right? don't worry. He's friendly. -ish. And of course, Sorok is just going to go like, Hang look, on. I was just as shocked as you were, so. <laughs> All right. Let's. Uh, the big thing is, as... Ken is. As Pumless. you approach the keep, you pass by a ramshackle wooden wall that looks like just a bunch of really sharp sticks that have been interwoven together. And you find yourself in the domain of the keep proper. At this point, I'm going to allow the party to split up. There will be no... Like, I'm not going to... You know, This isn't going to be a big fight. This is going to be diplomancing with fights well, if you want them so well where would everyone like to go well Sora heard female so Got it. he's immediately going that way uh yes <laughs> towards the female one where no one knows where she is oh nobody actually knows where she is correct shit um if you check roll 20, I put their names and locations if known. Scrag, Crag, no. yeah. Zarn, and Bells. Yeah, Zarn is the only one well, that has the location. Considering Zarn is the only one that is not around, I think we could start off with Scrag. I mean,. If I know anything about orcs with aunt, uh, around blacksmithing, they probably are the more chilled ones. Alright, well, you head that way. I ain't taking Biggles being indoors, that's just a recipe for disaster. I'll go over to, over to the training grounds and meet up with Crag. Alright. Alright, and who's going to Bells? I would like if to go anyone. to Bells. 
All right, then that will leave right. Shinzo and Shun to decide where they're going. I'll hmm. follow Icarus to uh, Bells. Hmm. And Shinzo. That was that was Shinzo. That, that was Shinzo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm yeah. dumb. Our waifu collector can't get the waifu. What do? <laughs> um, well, what breathe is heavily. Only, what is the only option that's left available? Um, everyone has gone to one. Uh, let's see if I remember correctly. Dingo is going to see Crag. Quinn mm -hmm. is going to see Scrog. And Ikarath and Shinzo are going to see Bells. And then Zarn is somewhere. Can I ask around for information on that one? Sure. Let's then let us go ahead and start with where am I where's my mouse? There it is. Let's start with Shun. Shun, as the re as the other four head out, you head into the keep proper. Around the main entrance to the keep is a bunch of shacks, ramshackle housing, and tents that seem to be housing the majority of the orcish women and children. Many of the children are you know, helping the women do basic household stuff. You know, stereotypical patriarchy shit. The women stay home and do the cleaning and uh, sewing. And, and cooking. Yeah. <laughs> and Actually, the, that's arguable. And the kids seem to just be helping them out or playing. Though a few of the older ones are training as well. You do see some orc, some older orc males helping out around the camp as well. Mostly carrying things back and forth. All of them give you strange looks as you walk by, but none of them really try to stop you. And eventually, an orc woman approaches you. Tall, severe looking, with a massive, like, triple scrat, like, triple claw scar across her face, cleaving through one of her eyes, which is blind. She looks Helica in the eyes easily as tall as her. Yada yada. Outsider. <clears throat> Helica does a bow. Um, yes, outsider is the correct term. I, um, hope I'm not intruding when I ask. Um, I'm just going to be blunt. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but I have a crew here with me, and goodness, I seem to have forgotten everything. And Helica kind of looks at the lady up and down, her eyes uh, glaring over, um, and she says, um, there's a particular chief I am looking for, and I was wondering if you could possibly help me locate them. Which chief is it? I had a character. What's his name? Zarn? Zarn. Zarn. That one. God damn it. That would be... Be right back, guys. Later. That would be me. Oh, oh! My! Oh, um... Yes, you certainly look... Uh, chiefly. Um... She raises, so... she raises a brow as she glances down at herself. She's wearing basically full leather armor with a massive wolf pelt over her shoulders. Uh, a wolf pelt that is still dripping. Uh, hmm. What is it that you do in this part of the camp? I take care of the people. The normal orcs who can't fight who can't go to war like the rest of those brutes. Do you enjoy it? It's not a matter of enjoying it. It's a matter of it needs to be done. Responsibility. I like that. Um, 
I seem to have lost myself, and I want to ask a question I'm pertaining to this camp, something very important, but I'm glad I found you because, um, actually, uh, one of my friends is an orc pirate, and mm, upon your name being mentioned, it seemed that he was uh, elated to hear about a chief, Tess. Oh, I bet he was. Quite. Half the orc men around here can't help but to lose control of their trouser snakes the instant they hear about a woman in power. Yes, I, I, uh, I can relate, I think. Um, <laughs> well... Damn it, I forgot what I was going to ask out of character. So smooth. But... <laughs> I'm pretty sure you also forgot in character. You're just like, oh yes, I can relate to losing my control of my trousers at the sight of a strong woman. What was I saying? Alright. Uh, um. Shit. Anyway. <clears throat> she blinks. That... What exactly are you here for, outsider? You and your friends. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, you know a salt marsh, right? Yeah. Hmm. Ah, there's been trouble about this place from that place. We we're sent from there, and right now I'm just we're just kind of scouting, looking around a bit. We don't mean any harm. Good. Will you be able to come and meet the rest of my crew? No. I have what? business to attend to. It's, she it's, reaches it would into, be quick. She reaches into her pocket and pulls out a small rabbit's foot and hands it to you. Give that to the what? guards at the main door. That'll get you in to see Taj. Taj. Oh, well, thank you. Um, and she does a bow... And then uh, walks off, looking at the rabbit foot in her hand, just curiously. It's still bleeding. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, it's, it's not a keychain. It's an actual rabbit's foot that looks like it was just <laughs> cut off. In my head, I thought it was a kawaii keychain. All right, well. All right. <laughs> All right. Very good. All right, let's go to. Oh, well, there we go. Let's go to Ikarath and Shinzo next. As the two of you enter the keep, you find that most of the people inside are, you know, well, most of the orcs inside are well, orcs. Is people too. <laughs> Point is, the folks inside are mostly minding their own business, doing their own thing. They don't really seem to pay you any mind unless you're in their way, at which point they'll kind of snap and you know, you'll have to step aside so they can carry whatever it is they're carrying past. But as you ascend into the Keep's Tower, you come out onto a large parapet. Basically, you see the top of the Keep on the handout there? That's, that's where you are. Sweet. On the top of it, you see a uh, very strict-looking orc wearing leather and plate, leather armor with steel plates placed haphazardly across his form. Like when you think of a stereotypical orc orc warlord, it's this gentleman. As he turns back, a lo a thick ponytail whips behind him. And his face turns to you, wrinkled, scarred, and with just the most magnificent beard you have ever seen. Huge, bushy, braided into multiple braids. And he stares the two of you down, standing at least seven and a half feet tall. Damn. You die. Can I help you, outsiders? Well, we're looking for 
one of the chiefs here. We're looking for bells. That's me. Ah, uh, I was assuming yeah. it was. He kind of he like shakes his head back and forth, and you hear a jingling sound. And then at that point, you realize at the end of each of those beard braids is a small golden bell. Stylish. I like it. Effective. Let's my enemies know I'm coming. I like seeing <laughs> their faces before I cleave them in twain. It's like Kenpachi Zaraki. Nice. I enjoy that style. I also enjoy letting them know what's coming. <laughs> so what can I do for you? I imagine you didn't come up here all this way just to admire my style. Well, as nice as it would be to pay you compliments all day, uh, that is indeed not why we're here. We're hoping to meet with all of the chiefs and the men, the one in charge. Right now we've heard that they are not seeing visitors, however... We've right. come a long way from Salt Marsh with the hopes of. Hopes hopefully of what? Forming some sort of allyship with you all. His eyebrow goes up at that, but he does seem genuinely impressed. <laughs> Scrag was under the influence that you, human lot, were gonna come try and attack us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's a few things to know about me and my friends. This first thing is that we're not like necessarily every other human. Although I will say, it does sound like fun. <laughs> Man after my own heart. <laughs> well, War Chief Taj has been pretty quiet recently. Maybe you can talk to him. Yeah. He flicks you a small dagger. Well, small by his standards. <laughs> in his in his hands it's probably a butter knife. To y'all, it's it's almost a short sword. Hmm. Excellent craftsmanship. <laughs> Tell it to the people who used to own the keep. He turns back to per, to watch over the goings on underneath the tower. Take that to the main door and show it to him. They'll know I sent you. Well, thank you very much. But now I feel like I do need to ask. Hmm. How long have you been in this keep, Bells? My tribe arrived about three weeks ago. We've been helping maintain the defenses since. I see. Taj himself was here long before that. Maybe three, three and a half months. If I remember correctly, Taj was here first with his followers. Then Zarn got here with her folks about two months ago. Then a month ago, Scrag and Crag both arrived. And then I got here. Interesting. Well. You'll see our... You'll see our party around this keep. <laughs> and... I'm sorry for whatever reason. If you were forced to come here. No. It was, it was our choice. Okay. Ah. Then I don't feel so bad. Welcome back, Quinn. My brother wants me to pick him up for something, and it may take me an hour or two to get back. Okay. I am sorry. No worries. All right. Well, Real life comes first. That's true. Yeah, I know. It's just I feel bad because this is just out of because my brother. Yeah, we uh, get it, man. No worries. You go take Fam care. You go take care of your brother. We'll still we'll be here when you get back. 
Yep. Thanks, guys. Yep. Y'all are fucking awesome. Take care, man. Never let a man or woman or thing or whatever tell you that you aren't awesome, because you are awesome. My cat says so every okay. day. God damn it, Hawk, you stole my line. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you guys soon. See oh. ya. Well, since Quinn, since Quinn is out, we will have to go to number two. Hey, look at that. Like it was... Uh, uh. It's like it was fate. Oh, unless... <gasps> unless Ikarath and Shinzo want to keep talking to uh, Bells. Oh, no, yeah. just... No. It... Shinzo's not much for diplomacy. <laughs> he, he wants to fight, you know? Like, that's his thing. <laughs> Well, the only thing I was going to add is I'm I'm glad that Bells was not forced there, put it that way. Uh, he does continue. We weren't forced here. We came by choice. We heard word that some orc war chief was building up a keep, hoping to build an orcish town. So, we came <laughs> to we came to join. Ah. He, then it sounds like a good fit. He gestures over the keep and the camp around it. It's not much, but it's the start of something. Uh, I don't think it's not much at all. It's quite impressive, actually. Only than I've ever had. You'd best be off. Go talk to Taj. He'll give you more info. Will do. Thank you, Bells. Hmm. All right. And as as Amo and Bigglesby head towards the training ground, you enter a part of the keep that looks a little more ramshackle, worn down. You can see Ivy climbing around the walls and a bunch of orc kids and teenagers helping to clear off some of the overgrowths and pull up trees. Mostly with their bare hands. <coughs> because, you know, that's how orcs roll. But, as the party, or as Amo enters, he sees a lot of orcs, you know, training against roughly made training dummies. Made out of, you know, straw and wood and rope. All of them being led by a very tough and gruff looking orc wearing thick, like, actual leather plate armor. Like, he actually looks like a professional. He glad I'll go... Go ahead. I was gonna say, I'll go off a little to the side and wait to be addressed. Eventually, he notices you're there. And it slowly approaches you. The hell do you want? Uh, I'm guessing you're Craig. That's me. Nice to meet you. Name's Amo. From over at, uh, Salt Marsh. Am I supposed to be impressed? I don't care if you are or you aren't. I'm just here to talk to you. Then talk. So people start Marsh getting real skittish about what you guys got going on here. My friends and I are here to try and find a peaceful resolution. Hoping to talk to the war chief, but they ain't sending any visitors, seeing any visitors right now. Hoping you could help me with that. Why the hell should I help an outsider jump in and talk to Tarj? Hmm? Well... How many men do you think you can hold off with this fort? With what you got right now. And how long if they break that bridge and surround you? I'm here to make sure that doesn't happen. I can talk to them and try and find a peaceful resolution. Or I can just tell them that you guys aren't willing to negotiate. And let the chips fall where they may. And I'll take a drink. Uh, testing, testing? Yeah. Am I? Yeah, you're coming through. Okay. 
All right, cool. I will uh, take a drink from my gourd. He scowls. We should have never settled so close to you, pink skins. I knew something like this was gonna happen. He pulls out an arrowhead and throws it at you. It hits your chest and lands on the ground. Show that to the guards at the door. They'll let you in. Thank you. As he turns away and walks off, you can hear him muttering something about fucking pink skins. Old Wigglesby. Oh. Got her ticket. <laughs> yeah, I know. Let's go. Alright. And I will... As the four of you come back together, you find that uh, Sorok hasn't returned yet. But you can see at the uh, at the main door of the keep is a couple of actually very well armed and armored orc guards. Like these look nothing like the rest of the like tribal orcs that you've seen across the camp. These actually look like they're able and willing to fuck your shit up. Uh -uh. So. Please, discuss amongst yourselves what you're going to do. Quick question. How many are there? Are there just two? There's just two. Okay. Jinzo mm -hmm. leans into all uh, the group. Can we fight them? They look like fun. No. <laughs> We're here to try and avoid a fight. Fuck you. Yeah, that's probably not the way we want to start this. If this is what they have on the outside, imagine what they have on the inside. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Well, guys, what just just so you know, they can't see us whispering. So, like, yeah, just be aware of that. Well, what if uh, fighting is a test? Maybe these gifts are. I don't know. I'm just speculating. If, because of orcish society, isn't strength valued over, uh, from what I've read? Well, there's more than one kind of strength. Well, I'm thinking, yes. well, we walk up with our tokens, probably get admitted, mm -hmm. have one of them hold on to Bigglesby, and talk to the war leader. Challenge us, and if they challenge us to a comp, to a, to a fight, to enter... Should we oblige? Yeah. I well, feel like it would be rude not to. <laughs> yeah. At that point, they are... Uh, like, I would ask, like, you, you guys sure? Or something like that to make sure, like, they really want to. And if they really, really want to... <laughs> well... <laughs> like, let's not kill them or like, anything if it <laughs> comes to it, but... Well, of you course, know. but... If just, combat I can, is not... Doesn't, sorry, Hawk. Go I, ahead. I, I can just imagine Shinzo walking up to them and, like, a fucking JoJo scene playing out. Like, one of the orcs <laughs> going, Oh, you're approaching me! And Shinzo's like, I can't very well kick your ass if I'm over here. <laughs> I, I, have, I, I also imagine uh, that, Shun that walking... Impression. I imagine actually Shun walks up behind and they're like, oh, you're approaching us too? Well, I can't seduce your asses from over here. <laughs> Dude, you were going to ask your question. Ha oh, no, I was just saying Hawk's uh, impersonation of Shun's always like spot. Oh, shit, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're uh, this. This is we're thinking this might be a JoJo scene. No, Shinzo walks uh, up to the guards. No, I, I hold all of it. It's just like my screen went black and it got oh. really quiet. So I was like, oh, oh shit! But it was just the screen table going to pop up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I um, need to move my mouse. Helica takes initiative and produces her bloody rabbit foot to the uh, two um, guards. The guards look at it for a second. 
Zahn. Yes. Mm. Uh, her token is supposed to be a leaf. Uh, um, I, I'm sure there was a mix-up. She she uh, said that this would get me through. This uh, it'll get you I through, all right. To... She's just being a dick about it. Ah, uh, she's quite nice. She seemed to be very genuine. She's nice to you because you're an outsider. She's not so nice to us. Mm. The two of them glance to... at the rest of the party, see the tokens in your hands, and just kind of nod. Like, yeah, yeah, whatever. They open the massive <laughs> doors to the keep. And as the party walks inside, you find that the main hall of the keep is mostly bare. As the four of you enter, sans uh, Sorok, because he's out talking to uh, Scrag at the moment, you find an old, wizened orc sitting on a small throne that's resting at the top of a small, you know, small raised set of stairs. The throne itself seems to be made of iron, with multiple, like, roughly made blades sticking out of it. Total Game of Thrones style. The orc himself is pretty big, still burly, despite having graying hair, wrinkles, an eye patch with a massive scar going through it. Uh, his other eye having a, uh, what looks like, you know, his other eye just squinting because he can't see very well. And as he looks at the party, he he leans forward to get a better look at them. <sighs> Great, more visitors. And he stands up. And takes a step, step takes the steps down to meet you on eye level, or well, as best to eye level as he can get, because the man is easily eight feet tall. God damn. Okay. On his on, you notice that he's not carrying any weapons, at least not yet. There are plenty lining the walls, but on his left arm. Over his forearm is a brilliant golden buckler that looks like it's made of some kind of unusual metal and trimmed with gold and sapphires. Hawk, you just gotta you gotta make it sound just so grand to me. I know. Like, I really want to take <laughs> over this keep and sit upon that throne because I really love blades. I collect them in real life, okay? And then you tell me about this golden trim buckle with sapphires. Sapphires, I fucking love sapphires. So now I want to steal the damn buckle. Do you want me to kill all of them and steal it? Look, I'm not saying go murder hobo, but I'm not not saying go murder hobo. <laughs> I feel like there's a certain member of our party that would be pretty upset with us, but look, Bean's well, he's not, not here, here right, right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> he's outside. Well done, everybody. <laughs> he's outside. All he's gonna know is we're gonna walk back out, and then we'll say, "Well, the new leader," and yeah, the evil they accept it, or we kill them too. <laughs> we just walk out covered in blood. He attacked us. <laughs> <laughs> he started it, but now trial by just... combat is complete. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, back to the scene at hand. Yes, yes. He looks down at the party. What do you want? Well, in all honesty, I kind of want that throne and that buckle. Cute. <clears throat> and what the do the rest of us want? Saying that. Uh, We're from um, Salt Marsh. Some people over there yes. are getting real um uh, antsy about the keep you got going here. I'm We're aware. the uh, 
but we're the peace delegation come to try and avoid any unnecessary bloodshed on either either way. Of course you are. Because it's always talking with you, isn't it? I mean, if you'd prefer, we could do some trial by combat for the keep. <laughs> oh, now that sounds fun. You would lose. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> you think I am some kind of wimp? Icarath would be studying the shield right now, by the way. Just kind of staring at it. Roll Arcana. I'm going to actually let Shinzo take over negotiations. I think he's got this. <laughs> Not really. It's going to end up in a fight if you let me do that. <laughs> Look, we I guarantee this, it. This like guy clearly doesn't want... eight percent guaranteed is going to be a fight. All right, so out of character, this guy doesn't want to talk. He's... He's not really open to negotiations. He, He's clearly tired of them and does not want to talk. He raises his hands and snaps. A couple of orc people you know, rush in carrying a small table that they set out and then fill with a couple fruits, some, some vegetables, some meats, and a uh, goblet of wine. Not a goblet, a bottle of wine. And then a moment later, they rush out with all the cups and silverware that you'll need. The orc, the orc war chief, gently sits down, cross-legged, in front of this small table, which is about you know stomach level to him at this point. Gently reaches down and starts filling up a plate with meats and fruits, and then he starts delicately eating it. I'm listening. Have some, please. Mm. It's been a long journey. Helica takes and eats like a hungry wolf. Abu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as, as the party sits down and starts eating, the chief... You know, looks up at them. Me and my compatriots, before we broke up, would always discuss important matters over dinner. See, it's the best way to do it. A full belly stops hot tempers. Hmm. Mm. Most, of, most of the time. Broke, broke yeah. up? Look. My Not... pan clear once. Go ahead, Hawk. Not all of us agreed on something we did. <clears throat> as he's as he's saying this, Icarath is who has been studying the shield realizes that many of the sapphires have been cut in such a way that they form runes, like actual like lines around the trim of the shield. And as he's slow, as he's slowly working his way around the shield, he realizes this is a magical shield. Hmm. It'll take him a little while longer to identify what kind of magic, but he can tell. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is an enchanted shield. I don't want it even more. <laughs> that wasn't the point. <laughs> the point for me, damn it. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but not to be rude to you, sir, but what did you guys disagree about? I'm guessing it has something to do with all this. No, it had nothing to do with them. So why do all this? If I'm not being rude. Because I'm tired of the lot we orcs were given. I'm tired of my people being barbarians. And wild folk. I am tired of orcs in general being treated like monsters by your kind. We deserve better. And we can be better. 
I agree. Heck, you've heard of lizard folk, right? Of course I have. What's, what would you say about lizard folk? Their religious devotion to their idiotic god is what keeps them down. Hey. <clears throat> I can see where you get that from. You ask much of us, uh, pink skins, as you put us, as you call us. <clears throat> They're as bad as orcs. Savage, wild things. And yet, not three days ago, went to a village of theirs, and we talked peace. And now, over in Salt Marsh, maybe half the people living there are losing folk. I don't know if you'd be interested in some sort of similar arrangement, but... I would. That's... You would. The rest of the chiefs that. aren't. Yeah. Crag was... Mm. Not so polite. To put it kindly. Crag hates your people. Always has and always will. Bells... Well. Bells wants to militarize, to follow the example of the hobgoblins, rather than trying to civilize ourselves. Interesting. Sc Scrag is just an asshole who wants to murder and kill all he can. And Zarn is probably the only respectable one out of the lot. But she's more interested in taking care of the civilians than actually setting up any defenses. Or hunters. Or anything like that. A good civilization needs its people, but it also needs its military, its providers, and its police. If all of those forces balance. are against each other, there's no way in hell it's going to work. Well, maybe we can whip them up into shape. There needs to be a, a healthy balance, I would say. The only, the only healthy balance they have right now is that they all want to kill humans. Ah. I keep trying to tell them that no, it just makes them the monsters your kind say they are. But they don't care. None of them care. This huge, eight-foot-tall orc man just slumps there, looking absolutely crushed and defeated. I imagine Bigglesby would, like, walk up and, like, nudge him a bit to try and cheer him up. He would glance over at Bigglesby as he as the B Rex does so. He'd do a double take. Faye. From what I can tell. He scratches behind Bigglesby's ear and then kind of nudges him away back towards Amo. <sighs> assume you've tried the whole telling them the whole philosophy of <coughs> different kind of strength. The strength not to fight. All that jazz. Zarn is the only one who took it to heart. But she was already feeling that way to begin with. I feel like she could be talked down. The others may need to be replaced. That's kind of uh, how I was thinking. Replace You're the head that, of this, after all. That's real dangerous talk, guys. The problem with that is that each of these tribes are still separate, even though they act like they aren't. Well, then how about we try to unionize them? Get them all as one. That's what changing leadership does require death 
and that could easily backfire. Eternal faction, civil war. Wouldn't be pretty. We'd have to see what the people of these, the different clans, um, even think. What if they're just scared of their leader's opinions and or they're scared of what might happen or the consequences? Maybe they feel the same way. They're tired of this whole petty fighting and all. I'm starting. I have think. an idea. Hmm? Sorry, go ahead, Hawk. No, you go ahead. I have an idea. If we can somehow separate the chief from their people without killing them, just for a few days, and present to this, the choice to the people to, you know, you can stay here and risk all that stuff and, you know, maybe become the monsters that everyone thinks you are. Or you can go over here and settle good, fertile land that already has some defenses and, you know, live a good, honest life side by side. And then, after the people who want to go have been gone, which hopefully will be most of them, the Chiefs will return. Very least, their power bases are going to be a lot more dwindled. They might be more open to negotiation. He thinks for a moment. You said you came from Salt Marsh. Yeah, uh, out east. West. 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 Oh, yeah, west. The map's upside down. Yeah, out west. But half a day's ride. Out of curiosity, who told you we were here? Oh, that was, uh... Can I get a prompt from someone who actually remembers this? Because I don't take notes because I'm dumb. <laughs> the man... Give me one moment, let me see. Yeah, let's see if let's see if Ryan actually has it written down. I do not. Uh, the man who informed two of you about the... Oh, orc... uh, he... He's looking. I, I don't like, think I, I do. I do not. Oh. The man who informed you about this orc settlement starting to establish itself was Gellin Pinewater, one of the richest nobles in Saltmarsh. Gellin Pinewater. The orc. From, uh, the orc what looks I can up tell, in shock. Older man. I I'm not mis yep, and I say yeah, I'm not mistaken. My assumption that he's at least somewhat known. By your folk. Oh, he's known by me, all right. I know that type of voice. What do you do? Do you know the legend of the sea princes? I've heard a bit here and there. He looks at the rest of the party. I've heard the name. I can't ever... Honestly, I can't recall. The, le Actually. the legend goes... That many, many years ago... The Sea Princes ruled over this portion of the Sword Coast with an iron fist. They had begun expanding inward. Creating smuggling rings and bandit parties to serve them until a group of adventurers stepped up and kicked their asses and sent most of them packing. Four of the seven sea princes died that day. Two left Salt Marsh and its surrounding lands never to be seen again. And one vanished into thin air. He taps the shield. I was one of those adventurers. Wow. 
the reason my party broke up is because of how we killed the Sea Princes. Not everyone agreed on how it was done. All we agreed on was that it was necessary. And I'm guessing Pine Water was either one of the princes or one of your companions. Pine Water was our party's warlock. He was the one who initiated our plan. And he was the only one who voted in agreement to it entirely. The rest of us hated it. But we had to go along with it. And just what was your plan here? Or his plan? He starts undoing some of the buckles of his armor and takes off the chest piece to reveal a massive pentagram over his heart. We made a deal with the lesser powers. Hmm. They gave us a damned army in exchange for our souls. So let me guess. Gellin wanted you to come up here and kill me. And the rest of my people. Yep. He said either we came up here and took care of you one way or another, or he sent an army. With that info, I think I know where he'd get the army from. There's a more important reason he'd want me dead. In any of the history books you've ever read regarding the Sea Princes and their fall, have you ever heard the names of the adventurers who killed them? And all of you can roll history. I'll tell you right now that we haven't. So, Ikarath hasn't, Shinzo hasn't, Helica hasn't, Amo hasn't, and even if some of y'all had rolled a nat 20, you still wouldn't have. Oh, Man's hey. name is his soul. No soul, no name. And because we've been without a soul, because we were damned... Our names could never be remembered. Ah. But that was part of the trick, wasn't it? If our names could be remembered otherwise, we'd get out of the loophole. Hmm. But now... He hangs his head again. It's no use, is it? At this point... Hi, Bean. Hello. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Cool. I may have astral projected a bit too long. <laughs> it happens. Uh, to catch you up real quick, the party has made it to the orc settlement. They have spoken to three of the four chiefs. Uh, one of which hates humans and doesn't want to talk peace at all. One of them doesn't care, and the other one is more interested in setting up an army than talking about peace in any way, shape, or form. And Quinn hasn't spoken to his chief yet, but from what the war, but from what the war chief leader has said, that chief is going to be a complete asshole to him. And the war chief himself was just revealed to be one of the legendary adventurers who defeated the Sea Princes decades ago. Mm. The only catch is that 
and this the 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 uh, Targe, the orc uh, fighter who was leading this settlement, had to partially sell his soul in order to raise an army of the damned to fight off the sea princes. Part of that deal is that he would never be remembered by the history books. So he was trying to force himself to be remembered by creating the first orc settlement, and now it's already looking like it's going to fall apart. Yay! <laughs> and the ass and the uh, old noble asshole that sent you and Amo to talk to the orcs and you know murder them all. He was also in that party, except he was the warlock who set up the deal. Oh, how very interesting. Okay. So at this point, Charlotte would just appear at the table as if she'd always been there. <laughs> As always. That checks out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Targ, the eight-foot-tall orc warlord, looks up at the party. I am so tired. I have been fighting and warring my entire life. I wanted to try and do some good for my people. And all I'm meeting is opposition, rage, and violence. If you want to go back out there and try to convince the four chiefs that there is a better way to do things, be my guest. Mm. Because at the moment, I've half a mind to just let it all go. Well, <clears throat> I say we get on it then, and we should try to, we will report back after we try our best to coerce in the chiefs. Uh, Charlotte, you All want right. to come with me to, with, to go see Zahn? Of course, but I would I like was... to ask, oh, go ahead. I was actually going to suggest that, uh. I uh, talk to Zarn, someone else, because they're obviously the most likely. Well, Shinzo, I think you should take someone and talk to the one starting an army. And try to make, uh, sorry, make, you know, the defensive army-based one. And try to convince him that Salt Marsh is probably the safest place he'll ever be. Mm. I'm not Smart. much for negotiation. That's why I think you'd be the best. You can hmm. show them that we pink skins ain't so weak. And probably have a pretty good idea on the defenses of Salt Marsh. So probably you're telling me about to go kick their ass? <laughs> I'm not telling you not to kick his ass <laughs> if it comes to it. Sweet! And then Shinzo runs off. <laughs> uh, someone should definitely follow him. <laughs> I'm sorry, but he. I'm trying to play him right. He's been getting bold with all this talk. So. That was Bells, correct? Uh, yes, that was Bells. Okay, well, we'll um, I'm gonna go kick Bells' ass. Um, oh, on that sort of sentiment. The one you spoke to. He doesn't like the pink skins, right? Yeah, I only got it. I got in here by almost threatening him with the army that was going to come if we didn't. If I go with you and reveal what I am, do you think we have any chance of convincing him? Um. I don't really think. I'm not sure. Honestly, I think that um, uh, uh, Soul Rock probably be the best one to go with you to talk to him, but he's still with the one down in the armory. I was gonna say I I'll go with Shinzo. Otherwise, that's why I'm asking. All right. All right. So Charlotte and 
uh, shoot, what was your character's name? Helica. Charlotte, let's go to the crack. Let's go to see crack. Come. Yeah, okay. no, you guys go see Karn. I'll go get Soul Rock. Crag. And. What? What? Crag, not Scrag. Yeah. What? Okay. Huh? So. Who's going okay, where? This is how we're. <laughs> Alright, so I believe Shinzo <laughs> and Shun what? are no. headed to talk to. Huh? What? Helica... What the hell? Helica okay. and uh, Charlotte is going to the training ground. Shinzo is already taken off, run into the... Yes. I guess Shun... Yes, Shun, <laughs> go get Shinzo and make sure your no, Bells doesn't die. I'm going with Shinzo. <laughs> the fuck is yes, going on Yes, that's what I'm here. saying. Ingram, no, I'm... Okay. <laughs> Charlotte, come. Wait, what? Okay, whoever's going to Bells with Shinzo, go. Ikaroth. It's Ikaroth, right? Yeah, Ikaroth and Shinzo go to Bells. Uh, Charlotte, Helica, go ahead and talk to Karn. You guys can probably make that work better than I can because I'm not very charismatic. I'll go get Soul Rock so we can go talk to the guy at the training grounds and hopefully make things work Zarn. somehow. You said Zarn. Zarn. Yes, okay. that was the initial plan, but I'm realizing that I need Soul Rock to do this, so I'll go get him while you guys do that to save time. Uh, Break. Charlotte, let's go with our original plan and go talk to Zahn. Before oh. Ikarath <laughs> is going to run and chase after Shinzo, he would like to take a moment and just say to Taj, I do have to ask about your your buckler. What is it? If you don't mind me asking. It's quite nice. It's a targe of reflection. Interesting. Uh, I see why you were one of that legendary party then. Uh, you can roll Arcana for that. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, basically, it reflects it reflects uh, certain spells back at their wheel at their users. That is good to know. Well, thank you for the. The knowledge, Taj. We appreciate it. And then he would kind of turn and run away. Alright. As the party rushes off in their separate directions, you, uh, let's see. Let's go with, let's go with Helica and Bean first. Or Helica and Charlotte first. <laughs> and, and suddenly an Australian artist appears in the middle of the game poof oh great <laughs> uh, yes so the two of you approach Zarn a an orcish woman who's just kind of standing in the middle of their of this orcish town slash camp she glances over at the two of you as you approach and then turns to face excuse me, turns to face you so the tall lady brought an older lady with her this time great Helica nods her, her hands tucked behind her back as she moves close to the um, orc lady we spoke to your grand chief and quite the figure he is <sighs> have you been aware that he's not well yes right and he's tired of all of this back and forth fighting with what you call pink skins yes mm. and how does your well your clan feel about that my clan would like for the violence to stop and to live peacefully. Well, well then, good. Um, the, pro because the problem the is that our own culture good. won't allow it. All of the oh. all of the men of my clan 
are too busy posturing and strong-arming each other into trials of combat and feats of strength to actually do anything productive. I would love <clears throat> for my people to be able to settle down and actually do something productive. Helica rubs her chin. Mm. Maybe they need a little, uh, I guess, another focus other than fighting and all that. But that's what I could bring to the table. You see, I come from a place called the Diamond Deserts, and the religion there is one of peace, I would say, is what it teaches. I would say that we could start to slowly reform the men of your tribe to see a better light. I appreciate the sentiment. But the men of my tribe are too focused on serving Grumsh to actually even consider worshipping or believing something else. Grumsh? Where have I heard that before? Uh, world religion. Uh, Grumsh is the god of orcs. Uh, hmm. Okay, well... That's, uh, right. Grumsh. Have they seen any sort of proof of this Grumsh? Yes, A all in, the time. In... Many, way? many of our warriors can feel his touch guiding their muscles as they fight. In fact, some of them that are only born with one eye are blessed by our god. And they become the most <sighs> barbaric and bloodthirsty of them all. Mm. We need to. We need to. Typity, 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 we need typity, to. Uh, what? Well, am I not muted? When, I should you, be muted. You were. Oh god damn! <laughs> <laughs> there needs to be another way. <clears throat> Is there any way we could? Is there any way you can gather them up? Yes. So we could have an incentive. Maybe we might need to teach them in a way that they're more familiar with. Mm. Fighting for something that is much more amicable than just aimlessly going around doing nothing at all. What is the point of being strong when you don't even use it well? <laughs> I like that. Yes. We need to whip them up into a productive shape. Hmm. Very fatal. But let's... I'm sorry, Zarn. My question, though. Is there any way we could round them up in order to try to see if we could... Um, talk them into another way of seeing things. She shakes her head sadly. All of the men of my clan left to join the others. So your clan is made up of? Women, no. children, and elderly. Hmm. Now these women strong enough to fight as equal as man. Oh, plenty of them are, they just don't. And why not? Because our own culture has broken them. We need to change their culture then. Hmm. This is going to be quite some work, but, um, well, I guess just gather what, what you can and those who will listen. Very well. Let's, let's just say 
If they have strength, we have mind. We can go the opposite way, if you've ever thought of that before. Of course you'd have thought of it, dear Charlotte. We just have to get them to be more, or take more initiative. And that's why we need to gather them together. I have such a speech I need to just get out. <laughs> just try to compel them. And you're going to help me, Charlotte. Okay. And you, Zarn, will you help us gather these women? Or anyone willing to change something if they're not too broken already? Very well. I'll have them here within a few hours. Good. Good. She wanders off to do her thing. And the focus turns to Shinzo and Ikarath, who are approaching Crag. No, Bells. The military guy. Shinzo would obviously be the full before Ikarath gets though. Yep. Yeah, he's Call he's that. a good amount in front of me. <laughs> All right. As you approach Bells, he turns back to you. You're back. What? Just a quick question. What's that? Weapon or no weapon? He raises a brow, but kind of holds up his hands as if to say, I'm not using a weapon right now. And then Shinzo punches him. Roll an attack. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so should I just use one of my weapon attacks? Yeah. Oh, my. Okay. Uh... Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> oh, no. totally as, you that come up, as you come up and swing, <laughs> he catches your strike with, his, with one of his hands. Saw that coming a mile away. And then he pulls you in and tries to headbutt you. As his head smashes into yours, you see stars for a moment as you stumble backwards. I imagine his bells sound like a fucking boxing ring. Ding, ding, <laughs> ding. Ding, ding. Gotta try that again. Uh, I can tell this is gonna be a lot of fun. And then he jumps back in for another attack. Oh, right. um, oh. oh, sorry. First one I thought didn't go through, so I hit it again. It's all good. You swing up and catch his bearded face in an uppercut that knocks him back against the para against the wall of the uh, tower. He he uh, sneers. And then laughs. <laughs> Hell of a punch, human. Yeah, us pink skins ain't nothing to freaking joke about. How are ya? He suddenly slides forward, swinging his leg up towards you. Ready to bust your face open with a massive strike, which connects to your face sending you reeling onto the ground. As you wipe the blood away from your nose as you stand up, he takes up a fighting posture and gestures, come on, come at me. Mm, and just dear. like leans his chin back and just, <laughs> this is fun! And then goes out. As you swing at him, you miss. And as he swings back, you duck under his blow. You swing. And he manages to deflect it with, a, with an arm. He swings back, slamming into your stomach. Your, your next swing connects with his chest, knocking a wind out of him. As he comes back... 
and headbutt you again. You can feel <laughs> you can feel yourself getting dizzy from these repeated strikes. <sighs> so Ikarath is still just watching. Should by I the way. Uh, should I continue, or do you think this is enough to calm you and your people down and negotiate? Because <laughs> I much rather continue. Uh, I think you've made your point. Uh, fair enough. He wipes the blood from his nose again and goes, uh, I like you. Likewise. You're all right. Tell me, are all the humans in Salt Marsh like you? <laughs> Doubt it. Most of them only care about material objects. Icarath would walk up and... really hold glory from battle. Icarath would walk up and pat Shinzo on the shoulders and say, They're definitely not all like this one, but some of them can compare. I'll be honest with you. I don't really care about making a settlement. I don't care about a city, how to run it. What I care about is fighting. Ah, but with you that, you said it to me, man after my own heart. But with that, I care about making sure that my clan, my tribe, are safe. That they are the strongest they can be. So tell me something. If our tribes were to ally with you, could you guarantee that? Are your uh, people the strongest? I could say we be? would fight as one. We have done it before against the Sahagin. I can't see why we wouldn't be able to provide safety. You know Let's of the lizard this folk. Way, if there's a uh, pink skin who doesn't, then they have to deal with me. <laughs> and me. I'll think about it. But thank you. Oh, thank you. It was quite a ball with all this talk. <laughs> <laughs> he turns back to the wall to look over the uh, keep and encampment as our focus goes to Amo and Bigglesby once more yep uh well since Saw Rock isn't back yet I guess I'm headed down towards Scrag to find that he's left for some reason and I have to deal with that guy now all right. At this point, I don't know what the two of them would have been talking about, so I can't really continue the conversation at all. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking maybe they just... That's why I was assuming Soul Rock wasn't there. Yeah. And that uh, was, was just, just Scrag say, being Scrag. Assume he hasn't found them yet. Actually, we could just assume that Solrock has been out mingling with the other orcs. Which would make sense. Alright. As you approach the armory, you can hear the telltale sounds of a blacksmith's uh, hammer going. Ding! 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 And as you enter, you see a few orcs working the forges. Overseen by a very... by a much older orc. Who, uh is leaning on a large great spear a massive a massive pole of wood with a huge axe head at the end you don't work the iron too hard you watch that hammer turn your forge up schlung hell Fuck off! 
love to, but, uh, kind of obligated to talk to you. Seen one named Solrock come through here? No. Fuck, of course he wouldn't. Well, I'm guessing you're... Scrog? Chief Scrog to you, Pinkskin. I didn't realize I was part of your tribe. Wanna fix that? What? I didn't realize I'm part of your tribe. Wanna fix that? You're not part of my tribe. Yeah. So you ain't my chief. <laughs> his but eye, I know some people. His eyes narrow. Even outsiders respect the law of the land they're in. And you're on our mm. turf now, human. Debatable, but I accept the premise. Chief Scrog. Now what the fuck do you want? Good iron and armor. Some people I know over in Slump Marsh. Bullshit. Really? We're not. What, is your armor that bad? We're not selling armor or arms to your people. Why not? Because they're for orcs. Oh. Well, if we had some orcs over in Salt Marsh. I would be asking why you kidnapped them. Actually, we saved them from a shipwreck, and they're there voluntarily. Free to leave as they wish. <laughs> then they've been brainwashed. Ooh. Strong words, but... I can see where you'd come from with that. Forced. Brainwashed. Taken into your culture. And forced to abide by your rules. Not by the ones <laughs> ordained they... by Grumsh. Hmm. That's fair. Well... I think I'll be seeing it, because I don't think I'm going to be able to get this conversation to go much further. Correct. Get out. Fair enough. As you, uh... Wait, are you the ones... Are you the ones who make the bows, as well? He turns and glares at you. Yes, why? Because they're shit. I mean, I made this bow myself, and it's at least twice as good as what most of the people on the wall are carrying. He hobbles over to a bow sitting on a table that's been recently finished, picks it up, strings it, and with one fluid motion, pulls an arrow out of a quiver on the wall, aims it, and shoots it into the doorframe next to you, where it embeds itself so deep you can see the frame crack. Hmm. Well, you can shoot maybe five more before it breaks. If you're not careful, human, I'll sink five more into your skull. Hmm. <sighs> yeah. Well, if you do need gold for some reason, or feel like trying to unbrainwash some fellow orcs. Salt Marsh. He sneers at you, but turns away, so he'll keep watching the forges. And, uh, that's all about all I got. Alright. So who's gonna go talk to Crag? Crag was... The, uh... One in charge of of the training. The one who absolutely just hates all humans. Well, I'll make my way over. Well, the other one. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make my way over there, Icarath. Anyone want to join? I'd him? obviously be. Yeah, I'd be following him because we will grouped up at Bell's. All right. 
As the two of you approach Crag, he glances over away from the drills that his orc soldiers are doing. Ah, more humans. What do you want? Well, first of all, let's correct that. And he would start to take his hood down a little bit. Ah, a human and a freak. <laughs> you know, the thing about saying things like that is that the same could be said about orcs, and yet I didn't start that one. He narrows his eyes but says nothing. Now, you guys have a nice thing going here. I will accept that. But don't you think that having some allies around here could be a good thing? The only allies the orcs need are more orcs. Well. Need. That's fair. You don't necessarily need to be friends with everyone. That's not what I would say. However, if there is a way to avoid conflict, don't you think that is a good approach to life? No. No. Conflict of any kind is what makes an orc an orc. It is how we prove our I strength. Say, um... It doesn't matter if that conflict is a fist fight on the top of a tower, and he glares at Shinzo, or <laughs> if that conflict is an argument about who made the better egg that morning. Conflict is what strengthens us, is what makes us more powerful. Interesting approach. Oftentimes I'd like to disagree with you, because I do think that me and Shinzo over here would agree that conflict is quite a fun thing to do most days. Most However, days, I'd say every day. Point taken. I think I'm more of an orc than a human, I guess. <laughs> and then he takes a sip of his ale. Point being. You don't necessarily need to have any escalation on anything else in the area. And... Not saying that anything would ever happen like that, but a little while ago, outside of Salt Marsh, we were able to befriend some lizard folk. I don't see why we can't have something like that. Would you like to know why we can't have something like that? And he starts slowly walking towards the two of you. Would you like to know why we can't do something like that? Why a peace treaty will never work? Why we can't all just be buddy-buddy with each other? Again, not looking for buddy-buddy. Shut the hell up. <laughs> well, why can't? Why can't that be the way, then? Because your people don't see us that way. Your people look at our culture and think it's backwards, it's barbaric, it's wrong. We see your culture and see weakness. Talking. Diplomacy. Those aren't real conflicts. That's dancing around the conflict until you come to an agreement. You just talked about a conflict over eggs, so I don't see how you can have any... Well, criticism towards what humans argue about. All I gotta say is, just ask your buddy Bells, and he will say that not every human is like that. No, not every human. 
but most of them. Too many of them. Most of them can change their mind pretty easily. Then most of them could already be living the right way. But they're not, are they? Should I go ahead and ring your bell too? <laughs> I fight to the death, boy. Oh, that just makes it even more entertaining, boy. Um, before anything else escalates, um, all right. First, I'd of all, like is to this in character or out of character, Shun. That's. That, that's Let's Ryan. Sorry, no, sorry, I'm, I'm bad at names. <laughs> Ryan. You guys uh, sound yeah, kind of similar, what's, what's, sorry. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, it's all good. Sorry, I, I, I meant to be oh, meant me. Ryan. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, this is, this is in character. Um, I'd like to use uh, a cantrip message to basically point towards Shinzo and say, are you sure you want to do this, buddy? <laughs> Out of character, go for it. <laughs> Like, I mean, if he dies in 1v1 combat, there's not going to be any issue with the power vacuum. His tribe will be leaderless. <laughs> Do it. Fair enough. Uh, okay. For the record, for the record, in case you don't know what that is, Shinzo message, it's just you and me communicating with our brains. Yeah, I figured it's telepathy. Pretty much. Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, and of course, he'd reply in his, uh, not in his head, but out loud, because... He himself <laughs> wouldn't know about it. He was just pretty much a gladiator, forced to fight okay. every day. So he himself doesn't know about it. But he would just shout out, I am, of course, headed, or oh, voice in my head, and then pull out his sword. Oh. The orc actually takes a step back and kind of gives him a wary look at that. <laughs> what? Are you scared now? He he puts a he puts a a hand to his face as if contemplating. Grumsh. Is it right to punch the mentally handicapped? <laughs> Jesus. His intelligence is a negative one, so I <laughs> guess that would count. <laughs> He's got the retold strength. <laughs> oh, God. Alright, well, are y'all saying anything else to him? Because he's kind of deep in contemplation at this point. <laughs> oh, well, Shinzo would just sit there and, like, troll this old around and be like, Are you just going to think all day? Uh, totally out of character and not actually there. I thought you were uh, done with talking about dancing around issues and stuff. <laughs> um Icarath would look at him and say like you know you're thinking an awful lot for something that I thought was just nature to you he closes his eyes in consternation If all you came here to do was insult me and try to convince me to join your little happy club, you can leave. And then he turns away and care. walks off. And Shinzo would walk up behind him, grab his shoulder, and pull him towards I don't care if you join or not. You promised me a fight, and you either deliver or you 
or the one who is weak, not us pink skins, and then pushes him. He walks over to a weapon rack, picks up a fairly well-made scimitar, balances it, and then charges at Shinzo. And give me just a sec. Let me pull up the orc monster thing, assuming it's in here somewhere. Right. The uh, so Crag rushes you, scimitar in hand, ready to strike you down. Ignore the fact that it says great axe. His first two shots swing towards you and miss just barely slicing off hairs from your beard and head. As you can see, pure fury in his eyes. And it's now this is what I'm talking about. And then he comes swinging down. That will hit as your blade comes down and smashes into his side. Dealing a good deal of damage. Damn. He howls with rage. A lot of his trainees are coming over watching the fight unfold. But none of them look like they're getting involved. You can hear them chanting in Orcish, however. Do either of you speak Orcish? I do not. Uh, I do not. Okay. Only common in Elven. He swings back at you. One of his hits managing to slice into you and deal... Ooh, 12 damage. He cuts into your chest, leaving a long, thin scar. <coughs> that will also hit. How are you attacking? Uh, he just... How did he just attack me? So I know, like, how his position is. Uh, he did a horizontal slice with his first, and then swung it around for another one that missed um I'm gonna come swinging down and then I'm gonna use a action soldier to do another attack to come swinging back up alright go for it well okay, second attack so... at least okay well, All right. both I missed the second I'll give you advantage on the second one because that was a cool description you'll hit with both sweet 16 total. 27 down. Nice. He roars angrily at you and swings hard. And I believe both of those miss. What's your AC? I think it's like uh, 19. 19. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was right. Hit 19. The first swing is a... Uh, is an overhead chop that comes down. As he steps forward, he brings it back and tries to cut across your chest again. Your turn. Uh, he failed that one. Yeah, he failed. For a second. Okay, I would like to say that I blocked that one with my shield, and this attack is going to be me stabbing underneath my shield. Just a fold stab motion. Oh, Oof. Jeez. <laughs> Roll damage. You run him through, slicing clear through his armor with the tip of your blade coming out of his back. He coughs up blood and sputters as you push him off. His free hand coming down to clutch his wound. <laughs> Ugh. Ow. 28, 38, 44. Damn. You 
we've got him down a lot. He spits out blood and comes rushing at you again. One of his attacks swings hard at your face and you manage to duck away from it only for him to suddenly snap forward with his fist and punch you clear in the face with an attack. Mm. Which will deal... Plus four. Ten damage. Oof. I'm down 17. Ugh. <sighs> You think you can take me, human? I eat punks like you for breakfast. I don't care if I can take you or not. <laughs> That's out blood. I just like having fun. Now I gotta say, this is a whole lot better than talking. And then he charges him down with a down old swing. <laughs> Go ahead and roll damage for that. Um, just so you know... I'm going to try and keep him alive with like one HP or whatever. So yeah. Uh, this guy's I'd... fighting to the death, buddy. Don't go easy. Well, no, at his last chance, I'm gonna give him a last chance as he's like right there before I deliver the final blow. He... Okay, you know? your funeral. Don't feel like you need to do that, Shinzo. Oh, um... I don't need to do that. It's just. He he sees the the fight that this guy is giving him, and he honors that. Like he yeah. sees yeah, the it's, fight and strength. It, it's it's, just it's a character that. choice, not an out of character choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My apologies. All right, his next attack swings up, slicing across your chest and dealing eight damage, and then he swings back around with a fist, smashing into your face again. Dealing nine more damage. I'm at zero. <laughs> You're at zero now? I am at zero. <laughs> <laughs> I will let you keep going if you would like to use your second wind. Okay, yeah, let me use second wind. Uh, this is probably the only combat this, this session is going to see. Let's see, 1d10 plus final level. So, 1d10 plus 4. Yep. Seven. Yeah. Hawk, may I also do something for Shinzo? Since Ikarath is watching. Uh, depends on what it is. It's a healing word? Shinzo won't take You're it. You're going to have to roll stealth to do it. Because if they see yeah. you interfering in a fight among men, you're going yeah, to and be on top part of that, of that if fight. Shinzo sees that happen, he would literally just put his sword up and be like, this isn't fail no more. I, I, I'll step back. Just, yeah, I'll let you know like how he would see it. Because those on on the fights. Um, yeah, no worries. So, um, Shinzo, a bigger orc than our orc. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> yeah. uh, it seems you uh, you hold quite a strength in you. I gotta on all that. I'm gonna fucking but... kill you, pink skin. Oh. You have no honor. I guess it is time for you to die then. And then he comes down with the killing blow, hopefully. That one will not hit. Damn it. As he deflects your attack with his scimitar, he takes a step back, swings back at you, and it bounces off your shield just barely. And as he brings it back down in a chop, you manage to step out of the way. And his sword is embedded in the ground giving you a perfect opportunity to strike back. Yeah, I was going to say, as I jump back uh, from the dodge when I land, I would do, like, a jumping attack coming down. That'll hit. As you slice his arm off, 
He screams in panic and rage, clutching his mutilated stump. He snatches up his sword and comes swinging back at you, utterly lost in the bloodlust and fury. The first attack goes wild, and the second attack as he swings at your face goes even wilder, flying past you as the sword slips out of his blood-soaked hand and embeds itself into one of the onlooking orcs. Ooh, that's rough. Your turn. That, that is rough. I'll uh, walk up behind him. Uh, does he have any hair on his head? He does. Grab him by the hair on his head and slit his throat. As you grab him, slice his throat open. Uh, I also do have grapple, just in case. Yeah, I I'm. That. Yeah, I'm letting it happen. He's got only. He's <laughs> okay. only got like. He's, he's got like no health left. <laughs> he stumbles forward, clutching at the now massive bleeding wound coming from his neck. Falls to his knees. <laughs> and slumps to the ground. It's sad you had no honor. But I will still honor you, because that was a damn good... As he clenches his chest. <sighs> he walks back towards their grass. You got any ale? <laughs> <laughs> as, you, uh, as you say that, and start heading towards Ikarath, and Ikarath starts healing you, I presume. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a healing word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not having health. <laughs> I, I could use some health, buddy. <laughs> uh, 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 healer man, can I have some of the good magic, please? As you, uh, Ooh, as you walk back teams. over, you overhear many of the orcs muttering something about pathetic teacher, or stupid man. And they just go back to training or drilling or doing whatever it is they were doing. However, a good number of them are now watching Shinzo with a good deal of respect. And they like, they give, like, as he notices them, they give him an appreciative nod, like, yeah, you're all right. And head, then yeah, head back to He would to, nod back to them as well. And then they would go back to doing whatever it is they were doing. <clears throat> well... I don't know if we've convinced all of them, but hopefully some of them will be a part of this cause now, Shinzo. Well done. Uh, cause? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Question, do I get any experience from that? <laughs> Considering you dealt with that motherfucker solo... I'm going to give you 900 XP for that. Woo. Okay, so 900 plus 2,775. 3,600. 4,675. Nicely done. As Shinzo and Ikarath sort of are just still standing there, he's going to look at the body of the orc and just say, I was going to try and stabilize him, and then you cut off his arm. Uh, he's <laughs> he's definitely definitely gone. Yeah. Well done. I like it. Um, he's gonna Shinzo's gonna look at him, look back at the dead boy, and be like, "Yeah, well, I should probably still on him." So he goes over there and puts two gold pieces on the dead body. Um, bef Icarath would also see if there's anything on the dead body. <laughs> <laughs> As you rob from him, I give him gold to go to the. I won't. I won't yeah. take. I won't take the two gold that Shinzo left. But if he has anything else on him, I would take it. Uh, as uh, before, you can do that. Some of the other orcs come forward and start dragging the body off, making sure that the gold coins stay on him. Kinda, okay. Kind of giving, giving Shinzo a weird look, like the fuck is up with this? Before just 
shrugging it off and dragging it away. Yeah, and eventually cool. you can see them start to strip down the body to claim the armor. <sighs> All right. So, in essence, Igoroth, you got jacked. That's okay. <laughs> it's alright. Yeah. There's plenty of other people you can steal from. <laughs> you can steal from anybody you want. Just make sure they don't catch you. Because <laughs> if they catch you, that's a bad. All right. He's really bad. So at this point, we're kind of waiting for Quinn to come back before we continue. Because I'm sure he would want to be here for the thrilling conclusion. If y'all would like to roleplay amongst yourselves outside the keep at this point, you are welcome to. Okay, uh, would this be considered a short rest? This would be considered a short rest, yes. Okay, so, to full HP. Yeah, I, I assume we're just gonna, like, yeah, reset. Yeah, because uh, I would like my second wind in action to pull back. <laughs> <laughs> Those things come in handy so much. <laughs> there you guys are. Well, Shinzo, I see you, um, uh, had some fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, can I have more of your ale? It seems I'm out. It's mead. Mead. Uh, take oh, a seat. Why? Let's uh, talk. Alright. So how'd it go with Bells? Ah, oh, we had a good fight. It went well. Good. And then we went to see what's-his-face. I killed him. It went better. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, just to make sure, which one did you kill? Which one was it? And it was the blacksmith. It was Crag, no. I think. Craig. I think it was Crag, yeah, the training guy. Oh, yeah, um, it was the training guy, Crag. And, uh, just to be clear, you didn't just, like, throw him over a cliff or anything, did you? Oh no, I slit his throat. After chopping uh, his arm off. Uh, but before before he chopped his arm off, we did try we did try and talk to him, but he just wouldn't accept any form of He dis tried. Yeah, you wouldn't accept any form of discussion. We I I tried to convince him that not all conflict is worthwhile. He decided it was worthwhile, so Shinzo got uh, to have fun. <laughs> okay, out of character, okay. I just gotta say the way everybody's saying that the Shinzo got to have fun is kind of like a, a the dog of the group, you know? It's like, yeah, oh yeah, he had fun today. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's my little sociopath. <laughs> How did things go with uh with Scrag? Scrog and um uh Scrog, correct. Uh well I got a new arrow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was uh intended as a gift. But uh Solrock wasn't there, so it was bust. Hmm. I wonder where he is. Probably was um, yeah, I was about to say, probably two inches deep in a woman, in a girl's pants. Two inches is generous. Ha 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 ha. Boom, roasted. <laughs> at this point, at this point, I'd say Helen <coughs> and Charlotte would be returning. Ah. Charlotte and Helica. Greetings. That is I, I was going to ask earlier, but I wanted to know more about the one who perhaps sold half of his soul. Well, there ain't really much to know. You sold yeah, your name, you lose that. People really can't write about you. 
Well, he should have done all of it. And her eyes look as soulless as they can be. He's ruined his life, living a half-life. He might as well not have lived any. I wanted to go talk to him, if you know where he is. Probably in the same place he was. Yeah, I'm probably still in the keep, would be my guess. Hmm, I see. Don't forget, we have the speech, Charlotte. We do have that. Is there anything else we missed today? Uh, Bigglesby almost said a word. Yeah. Yep, almost. Yeah. I think he was trying to say food. But it might have been stool or wood. <laughs> Most likely food. Shinzo cut a guy's arm off and slit his throat. Oh. Oh, good. Very typical. <laughs> 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 granny, 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 always gotta give me tough time. Tough time? Well, he's not intelligent. At, at this point, I know it's I just. Want, okay? At this point, Granny, why are you giving me tough time? <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. Please. At this point, uh, the party would see a lot of orcs, mostly women and older ones, coming up towards the entrance to the keep where the party is, led by Zarn. Ah, well, Helica, it seems like they did come. I wonder what Helica. you plan to say to them. Uh, Helica yeah, smiles well... widely. Um... That's good. I have, um, I have a thing in my head that I would like to just, just restore their faith. She says, her eyes kind of glaring. Okay. Red. Helka, is a really important speech. Give me like the bullet point version, like super quick. Um, have you ever been to church before? Oh god, no, don't. I'll play right now, don't. It's not going to work. They are very, very held fast to their faith. Um, Helica Boone. And I'm sure you don't know enough Rocket about League. it to. Sorry, what? I'm, Go ahead. How did I'm, you hear that? I, I, I know plenty about Grumsh. Okay, I'm just saying. These guys really seem to like strength. Uh. Try the whole different kind of strength angle. Like, there's different yes. types of conflicts, like fighting with mm -hmm. the lands and the mountains mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Just. Yes, yeah, so you're telling me. Be careful with the that... faith. Yes, I, I will use finesse. Just, um. I'll do it in the Helica way. You've got this. Yeah. Yeah, if you, uh... thank you. If you need us she, to cheer or build speed of war, just give us a little signal. We got gotcha. you. Helica picks at her one tooth, which is a gold canine tooth, and she just says, "Okay, um, hmm. Wait, did you seriously? De did you say you decapitated one of the? Did I did I hear that right? One of them is dead." Oh, no, no, not decapitated, just his throat is slit. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> he is he's missing an arm now, though. Is he alive, or is he just, you know, dead? Oh, he's oh, dead. Oh, no, no, he's dead. He is very dead. Yeah, 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 he's dead. <laughs> this is the deadest um... orc I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I he, think I've seen he went from a He went from a shade of green to a lighter shade of green. But what did that prove? Are we supposed to tell them that we are not uh, pink skin, pink man, not bad? Right? <laughs> uh, from what I can tell, it was a trial of combat sort of thing, but there wasn't much choice. Let's. Uh, his lackeys seem to like me afterwards, so I think we'll. Oh, well. Okay, I hope that helps. It's just 
I do not know what to expect from a group of orcish women. I, they seem to not be as um, violent as the men. You see, Zarn told us that <coughs> that um, the men of her clan left after being, I guess, too bored and not acting out the will of Grumsh. So they left and spread out to the other clans that are here. I'm guessing those were the ones that you encountered. Well, Bells actually seems to think that they'll he'll consider it. Whereas uh Crag Crag's his name? Crag was the uh, one that we had more of a problem with. Crag's the dead one. Uh, you're thinking Yeah. And Krog is just right out. At least for me, I he ain't talking to no pink skin. All right, so that's potentially that's two down, and two more to go, right? Uh, well, I, I considering would say three down. Three. Like you got Karn, right? Zorn, Zorn. Bells, and Crag, all good. It's Scrag at the Almering, who still needs influencing, I think. All right. So let's get this speech done with, and then we'll we'll find Soul Rock and try to figure that one out. Right. You got this, Helka. Thanks. I think I'll be by this your is the side. first time I've... I know, Charlotte. You always... Uh... I think, though... Yeah, wait! You are always there. I didn't see you on the cart. <laughs> uh, P.S. real quick, we traveled by cart. Don't... Don't, don't, don't question it. Don't think about it. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. okay. All right, guys. I'm hearing a thunderous voice from the heavens that we probably shouldn't worry about what's going on with Charlotte and the cart. <laughs> right. So... Well, I'm always around. I don't have to physically be there. <sighs> I'm just too caught up in the moment. Um... Like I was saying, this is my first time actually giving a speech. It's kind of exhilarating. Uh, oh, my face is on fire right now. Mm. And it is with fire that you... But it is with fire that you must prove to these ones. Both the men and women. Mm. Well, at least the young children. It doesn't seem like there are any men in that crowd. Yep. But then again, were there... I thought I'd seen two... at least two men helping the women in the, in that in the place. They were probably but, older folk. Uh, you got this? Yeah. Don't be afraid to get angry. <laughs> oh, I'll try. Um... But on that note... I don't honestly think, I'm going to be honest, I don't think our dear orc captain has a chance with Zarn. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Look, the people are where the power comes from, no matter what society it is. So if you get the people, the chieftains will follow. Yes, that is right. Just trying to see. I, I know I'm going to get some of them looking at me kind of oddly. I expect that, but if, yes, if I can get the majority of them on my side, on our side rather, then we, we're done. I mean, we only have one more to go. Are you going to give yeah. a speech or not? Huh? Wait, right now? <laughs> yes, right all, now. That's why we're yeah, telling you good like, luck so you can go do your speech. Yeah, all the orcs are now just watching you like, is, is she going to give a speech or is she just going to be angsty? <laughs> Alright, my bad, my bad. Okay, um, because I thought we were waiting for, um... No, no, go ahead. Please. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, um... So, it's like, uh, is there, 
There, is there any stage or anything? No. Get up on Bigglesby. Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Helica um, carefully climbs the top of Bigglesby. <sighs> okay, and she pets um, the, the, the B-Rex. And, and uh, she looks over everyone. <clears throat> and she looks and says, it is for me a blessing and a remarkable responsibility to stand before you beautiful orcs today. I appreciate the invitation from Chief Desarn to speak with you all. Thank you for gathering them. As I entered this camp today, I, my mind was flooded with emotions on how lost I used to be looking upon your faces and letting myself become hopeless. I re vividly remember sitting way atop the old Mummy Lord statue back in the Diamond Deserts and thinking to myself how I could become strong until my mother, the Sphinx Queen Issa, approached me and delivered a powerful and extremely direct message about the importance of inner strength and self-reliance. I also remember how squirmy I was, and I did not understand how important the message she was telling me was at the time, and it frankly never occurred to me that someday I might be invited to stand here and speak to a group like you and to deliver a similar message. It is clear to me that you all need reform. I remember reading in the books of Abyssia that orcish women were just as, if not more capable than the men. You have the smarts enough to know that, I mean, I could only wager and guess that the pink skins are capable of great goods and evils, just as you all are. <sighs> Thus, I've been more or most prayerful and serious about thinking about what I would say to you all right now. She wipes her face. My objective now is to describe and discuss both the redeeming and enabling powers of soul, my father. You see, Grumsh has done nothing but bred discord amongst your ranks and destroyed what harmony you have had with each other. The framework for my message today is a statement by my father some long time ago. He summarized the overarching purpose of his teachings in these terms. The purpose of his word is to make bad men and orcs and good men and orcs better and to change our nature to work in harmony with each other. I want to ask if does Grumsh teach that? that? From what I've read, he only punishes orcs who stray from his directives. Sure, his disciplinary methods are quite harsh and his tolerance is limited, but Grumsh seems to want orcs to worship him as a source of power, and he is in truth a selfish bastard who extorts his worship as for a divine influence. Soul would want, would want you to practice the power of self-reliance, you see. This is a journey of a lifetime, and it is a journey to progress from bad to good, from weak to strong, to inner perfection, and to experience the mighty change of heart and to have our fallen change, our fallen natures changed. You all here are capable of great fury and limitless strength. Let's change the definition of what orc tradition is and make it to something that could benefit everyone. You see, I was told by the chieftains that the men left to follow Grumsh and they will eventually meet their end soon enough with nothing to prove or pass down to their children other than a name or an, or an ax or whatever. You lot have plowed and planted and gathered into barns of your own. You could work as much and eat as much as any orcish man and bear pain greater than they could with no fear at all. It is beautiful to see. It is unlike anything I've ever seen. All beautiful and blessed you all are with strength, the likes of which, honestly, it is astonishing to me. I just want to end that says, and say, my father's wisdom says that a nation divided against itself would not stand. So where do we begin? 
I think by remembering that you are Clan Zahn, a fierce clan of warrior women now. Oh my God. And so, with that, let's lead in that and take responsibility and use our power to unite us and make peace with Salt Marsh. If we do, we can rise above the issues that separate the other clans too, and we can work together to find common ground. It's a start, but with the help and blessings of soul, we will manage. That is my speech. Shun, she climbs up a bit with speech. Huh? Shun, you need to go into politics. Because that was like nearly four minutes of absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. actually make it in politics. Oh man. Um, that was actually that, like... that was actually a really cool speech. Uh roll roll me persuasion. Oh fuck. A lot uh, of, uh, quite a few of the orcs, mostly the women, are kind of nodding in agreement with that. With the sentiments. Um, As can Bigglesby help by standing man? regal and, like, showing that he is a podium of power for the oh speaker? Oh my god. Yes. Oh my god. So, okay. that's a 20. <laughs> oh. Because Bigglesby is helping. Yes. Um, Yay, Bigglesby. You've managed to convince a fairly large number of the orcs that, yeah, maybe Grumps's, Grumps's traditions are kind of fucking stupid. And we should be doing things in a better way. However, <laughs> many of them kind of, sh- kind of like many of them are shaking their heads. It's split about fifty-fifty. Quite a few of them mm. are heading off. Like no, no, no. We worship Grumsh. Like that's the wait. That's no good. Charlotte yells, and the Biggles people will, like harrows. dig his his nose underneath her feet and like lift her up. As she does this. You hear the voice of this woman. You know. Or maybe you don't know who she is. And that is why it comes from one ear to another. And you lot. No matter what your kind is. No matter what. Your people lie. I will tell you. That it does not matter at all. We all are blood and flesh, and we will die the same way. So I want to tell you this, and understand the duality of all of us. We come in peace, and she looks to Helica, putting her in the stage, giving her a light. Actually, you know what? She puts a minor illusion and freaking puts a spotlight on Helica. She makes sure <laughs> that Charlotte, Charlotte is just like um, showing it off, making these people look at her. Any of them, just just as long as this, keeping an eye, and she is narrowing to you, orcs, men and women. I want to show you what lies. Between a pink skin, or whatever human, whatever race. In fact, even Helica is not even, clearly not a pink skin at all. Half pink skins. Well, even that is proof. She is half. And, sorry, what was your other half? Sphinx. And Sphinx. But does that stop her from putting herself in such a way? You lot also have half orcs, do you not? Right. And I am looking at all of you too. Maybe it is better to be proven. And Charlotte from behind stands next to Helica now. That even someone like me can attune to your culture as well. Helica, can I have, or may you allow me to use your weapon? Oh, uh, if you can hear, and she gives you her giant as fuck kopesh. She gracefully takes it, and she looks at everyone. Watch now. 
and she begins to stab one of her eyes, twists what? it, bleeding out. Oh, what? She brings it, her eye still hooked into her weapon, and she uh. looks at them, an eye for an eye. Doesn't matter what I am and what you are. We are all the same soul. In fact, I don't even have one. So say it you that you take worth for what you are and do not waste it. Hot damn. You hear a lot of the orcs starting to cheer at that. Uh, she did you really just remove that your eye? eye? Yes. Her hands are shaking. Her face is bleeding out in one side, pouring down to her chin, ruining her robes, as she begins to lick her the blade and takes the eye like a kebab skewer and puts oh. it in her mouth. <laughs> the jelly of her eye and swallows. Whoa. Wow. Everyone else just saw that, right? <laughs> Do you think I am joking? Do you think no, that an no, old Bane. woman okay, like okay, me... Okay, Bane? Bane, are you okay? Yes, I am totally fine. <laughs> okay. Um, You've got no. their attention. You have gotten their approval. You don't, you don't have to go further here. Yeah. Uh, I the want best you to do sure. would be all right, uh, out of character, transist in that speech. You know, you got their approval, like, yeah, we're equal. So why not live in Salt Marsh? Try to make yes! that connection. Make that, make that transition. Do you know who I'm. Do you know where I'm from? Salt Marsh. And I prove to you this. And we all prove to you this. We may be wanderers, we may be travelers. But we've lived here for long enough to know that this place is worth it all. And I give you this. She drops the kopesh, but realizes <sighs> she picks, picks it up. It up. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, blood everywhere on this. I just polished it this morning. <sighs> She sheathes her weapon. Charlotte just holds her ho half of her face. Uh, I need a bandage now, dear. Did you literally have to take your eye? I didn't think that would... All right, uh, here. She gets whatever a linen cloth, like a mummy, uh, it's a mummy wrap, and gives it to uh, you. Amo will help with the 15 minutes in to dress that wound. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Helica looks at the crowd. Good talk, yeah. team. Yeah, they're they're very impressed. They're down for it. Though a lot of them are now coming up and like asking, "Are you okay? Do you need oh, no. Do you need healing? <laughs> we I might, may. We have potions. <laughs> that might be a very good idea. But well. Let's just say I might be extreme with my words. I'd say your actions are a bit more extreme than your words. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. the words were fine. Yeah, that's all perfectly fine. <laughs> the actions, though, it's just... Well. I mean, I'll be frank, I thought the actions were great, too. Wait, I thought you were Icarus. Actually, the, the only action I was like, oh my god, was the eating of the eyeball. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that was the only thing. I like the ripping it out and, you know, eye for an eye. And on top of that, I thought it was cool because of how you said with the whole deity, the whole, you know, losing sight in one eye is, is strengthens and shit. So it kind of tied in with that. And I thought that was really cool. But I was not expecting the eating of the eye. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I am back, guys. Welcome back. Yeah, back He's in. back. He's and back. I think we're done Welcome with our back. speech portion of the program. Yep. I, think we I am that, sorry. Uh... For literally two hours of B 
being gone. Oh, oh you only missed uh, one death Two hours of fucking and the boss of an eye. Wait, what? Oh, you only missed uh, one orc chief dying and... Uh, see, one died, one guy's ass kicked, and our... Uh, See, I wouldn't say lady just lost her eye. We kicked My presidential speech. <laughs> oh, yeah. Presidential, yeah. yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> yep. uh, all the fights were consensual. Uh, can you please go talk to the armorer guy? Because uh, we we really can't. Actually, I've tried. It doesn't work. So during this during this whole thing, Solrock has been hanging out with all of the orcs in the key, around the keep and in the town and learning like you know, how they feel about all this. And at this point, he would return with updates for everyone. The oh, boy. The majority of the, like, women and kids and older ones, they, wa they just want to settle down. They just want to live somewhere peaceful where they don't have to worry about, you know, having to go to war and fight and bandit everything in order to live. It's the warriors of the tribe that want to go and yeah. fight a lot. A lot of, in fact, a lot of the warriors, like as you ta as you have spoken to them, you found that a lot of them would be happy to just go live in Salt Marsh as long as Salt Marsh would have them. They're sick of living in camps. They just they they want to like they've heard about what the war chief has said and how he's lived, and they're like, I want to do that. I don't want to live in a tent in the cold anymore. I want to actually have a small house. Yeah, Sorok is more or less going to sympathize with them wholeheartedly. Like, these are good people. They aren't all monsters. I mean, heck, Sorok would love to have such a life if he was a kid. But, of course, he's not. He's an adult now, but... <laughs> Point still... Other orcs that are kids themselves should have the opportunity to have those options. Mm -hmm. The problem is that th three of the leaders, uh, Scrag, Krog, and Bells, don't really care what they all think. They want to militarize and turn the orcs into a fighting nation that can conquer and rule. Although Sorek has a bit of a stupid idea with that information. Well, well, at the, at the end of this, at the end of your day, you would learn that uh, Krag has been fucking killed in a gladiatorial combat with one of the humans. And uh, that another one of the humans is giving a speech out in front of the keep. Oh, no. And the warlord? What's the warlord's opinion on all this? The Warlord's opinion is completely different. Because, well, I'll, I'll explain that when you actually get to meet him in a minute. As the party of six finally steps into the Orcish Keep once more, they see that the other three chieftains are there around a circular table, looking up at the Orc ch War Chief, Targ. Uh, since you didn't hear it, uh, Quinn, Tarj is an eight-foot-tall, muscular, o aged orc, graying hair and beard. With a question, does he look very similar to? No. Nah, damn. Uh, he has a golden buckler on his left arm that is inlaid with gold and sapphires that spell out runes. Well, and... talk about the rich man here. As the others fill you in, he's rich because he used to be an adventurer. In particular, the adventurer that kicked out the Sea Princes from the coast of Faerun all those years ago. Would it be a bad thing I told him that I'm a pirate? Probably. As they fill you in, they the party... Well, you know what? I'm just gonna... Why don't I let the party tell you instead of me filling you in? Yeah. Okay, so... so what, let what me get this straight. One of you murdered one of the chieftains? Oh, okay. 
Murdered. Murdered, Murdered is not the right word. Yes, it is not the right word. It was consensual, okay? <laughs> consensual attempt at murder. Yes. There's no such thing as killing someone consensually. Yes, okay. there is. Mean, murder or yes, death. There is. It's a fight no, to the so death. Sorry. Both people agreed to a fight to the death. It's consensual. <laughs> and I tried to it tell was... him not to. Look, guys, it was Mortal Kombat! <laughs> no. uh, okay, you so what? what had happened was um, I was told, well, not me, but Shinzo was told that it doesn't matter how we resolve it. We just need to get these people to agree with us. And so he went to see Bells in the Towel again. And as that soon went as he well. got there, yeah, as soon as he got there, first thing he asked him, like, first thing that happened as soon as he showed up was, like, he asked him, weapon or no weapon? The Hulk looked at his hand like, I'm not holding a weapon. And then Shinjo kind of punched him. And then it became a fist fight. That went well. And everything went in agreement. And Shinzo now has a new best friend named Bells. Um, and then... <laughs> We went. Wait, Sinjo to... actually got the one of the chieftains to befriend him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Two, we went to go see. <laughs> that just uh, results Krag. in Sorok just looking at Sinjo like, "You crazy mad lad." <laughs> and then we went to see Crag, and he didn't want anything to do with us. So, um, well, he it he wasn't. We had a fight to the death. So he owed me that. And yeah, it wasn't so much he I didn't want anything to do with us. He just, he said, without a conflict, things are nothing. Yeah. I mean, he's and technically not conflict. wrong, but it's also, like, there's more conflict in peace times than you realize. Well, uh, I mean, there's pirates! So, As he just, you know, does a da-da kind of pose. Uh, yeah, you may not want to go flaunting that. The, uh, war chief was one of those people who drove out the pirate princes all that time ago. So, I mean, I'm not related to any of them. At least I don't think. Yeah, but he might not like the idea of there being pirates around here. Just, He's uh, not related, he thinks. I should not have... I probably should not have... <laughs> Not try to recruit from here, then. I'm just going to leave that line over there in the corner, along with a uh, <laughs> steaming warm pile of foreshadowing. God damn it, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so, uh, yeah, just... Is that corn lady still alive? Yep. At least? Yep. Uh, yeah. That, uh, uh, question, maybe I can persuade uh... her myself, but, uh... No, no, uh... I... I think that that already took place. Uh, Helica and Charlotte did a decent job. Really? Yes. That uh, that that wonderful political speech and then that gory display of we're all bleeding red was pretty damn effective. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you would notice that Charlotte is missing an eye that is currently bandaged. Her right eye. Her right eye specifically. Come next session, it'll be back. You should get that looked over. <laughs> Out of character, we speaking though. I hope I didn't scare you guys too much. <laughs> no, just my character. It was. It was this pretty creepy really old lady. Crazy. Yeah, I, I, uh, I like honestly, I would, like, all honesty, like I said, the only thing that really threw me full loop was the eating of the guy. I did not see that coming. Like, but okay. it, didn't, it didn't scare me. Okay, now. like Bean, are you okay? Yeah. Okay, good. That's all that matters. Because I was like, damn. Yeah, she was just playing the role but, of a crazy old lady. Right. Yeah. Guys, but yeah, I, I, I know we all love the scene, Let's, but yeah, it's on. getting pretty Let's... late. We need to wrap things up. All right. <clears throat> well, so, yeah. I guess we could go talk to the war chief himself. And yes. I'll keep my lips shut about the whole being me. But actually, yeah. I'll be honest in saying that I'm a purveyor of goods so <laughs> I won't exactly elaborate uh, as the, look it's your funeral as let's the, go as the party heads in you find yourselves 
before the three chiefs and war chief Targe. Targe looks defeated. He looks like he's ready to just give up. Uh, you okay there, big man? Bells and... Which one's still alive? Scrag. Are standing next to each other. Scrag is looking at the six of you with absolute hatred. While what did, Zarn, what did I do? While Zarn is looking at the party with admiration, honestly. Jason, why is he staring at us with anger? You're hanging out with some pink skins. Why? Targe raises his head. You keeping me alive should be a good indicator that you aren't assholes. My chiefs <laughs> have come to a decision. If Salt Marsh will have them, those who support my goals and your goals of peaceful coexistence will return to Salt Marsh with you to live there peacefully. Uh, what about the rest of you that, you know? Bells nods to Shinzo. We'll Shinzo leave. Shinzo his mug to... We'll leave peacefully. We'll go north from here. You won't hear from our tribes again. I mean... But we're not going to be part of this... Experiment. Well, fair. But, uh, Experiment. I mean, I wish you luck with your trials up there. That is your Plenty decision. Conflict with the planet. <sighs> well, Shinzo goes up to Bells and gives him a, uh, you know, the gladiator handshakes while they grab the, uh, the form. Yeah. Yeah. Bells goes and says, uh, you need me. Let me know. Icarath would also walk up with Shinzo and say, if you ever want to reconsider, you know where we'll be. Of course. And he and, and uh, he, uh, he reciprocates with the gladiator handshake. And, uh... Look, I don't really know much about my own kind's traditions, okay? I've lived in Waterdeep as an orphan for, like, most of my life. But... I do wish you all luck. On your goals. Whatever they may be. And I do hope you live with... Honor? If that's a thing among your people. Strength. Strength, honor. Aren't they all the same thing? An ideal... <laughs> an ideal of... Respect. Sc Scrag spits at you. And he... He potters out. You Bell know, I'm kind of glad I didn't take you with me. Bells Sorry. gives a small bow to the rest of the party and a large bow of respect to Targe before walking out as well. Zarn starts, go starts leaving as well, and as she does, she says, I'll need to start gathering my people to head to Salt Marsh with you. Good. Well. As she leaves... Latin as she leaves, the doors close, leaving the party and Targe there alone. So, that's so that's... seems that we did get a peaceful negotiations made. I'm somewhat your peaceful Honestly, negotiations. Your peaceful negotiations have been concluded. I that is very good. I feel this is the best ending you could have had. I mean, preferably not the death of one of the chieftains, but, uh... Hey! Progress. Well, I gave him honorable death. It was one in battle. What about you, to Sorry. Mm. Hang on. Nokish one, that's for sure. Can I ask one more time, 
just to hear it with my own ears and with my one eye. Why do you hate Alkine so much? I don't. I... He... I... He is all down merger. It's the chieftains who are against it. Actually, the, the most I important see. question is why orcs in general have a bit of a disdain towards others of other races. Because that's because Grumsh tells them to. Grumsh is the one who tells them that they need to exert their strength over the others. And those who follow him correctly. are fools. That's what I've been saying the whole time. Exactly. But my purpose for doing this was different. I didn't. I don't care about Grumsh. I never have. <laughs> I mean. And, and I've traveled alongside the other races. I know what good and ill they can share. And to be quite honest. I wanted the orcs to share in that good. Perhaps I... they still can. I mean... I'm, when I'm monologuing here. Give me a moment. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Take care of those orcs. They deserve a better life than the ones that they were living before. We will do our best. And she looks back to the party, won't we? Well, that's the only way to do things, no? It's been our purpose does... traveling here for that. So we will do our best. That begs the question, Tari. What's next for you? I'm old. I'm very tired. And I'm tired of trying to find a loophole. Will you also be going to Salt Mulch? No. Because Gellin's there. Deal? As long as Gellin is at Saltmarsh, I'll never be safe. Wait, the uh, human? Well, uh, um, I can take care of that issue. Uh, uh, I'll explain it to you later, Solver. So you are the one that had... Let me recall. I'm sorry if I'm incorrect. You're the one who sold your soul, or half, to that man. He, he uh, undoes his chest plate again to reveal that on his chest, right above his heart, is a pentagram seal. <sighs> the work of a warlock. Not as finessed as a witch sometimes. But our, I digress. Our adventuring party, when we fought the sea princes, were forced to make a deal with the dark powers for a damned army to fight them off with. Part of that deal was that our names would never be remembered by history. Only as the adventurers who stopped them. Mm -hmm. I thought that by making history with something amazing I could escape that fate. But now... The settlement has already failed. It was already going to fail. And my soul is forfeit. I... don't think you failed. No, you did not. And Charlotte's face actually softens, and she... She looks at the man again. You know, 
surprisingly, we are quite alike. I guess I haven't told everyone here yet, but of course I'm not who I really am. She sighs. But that may be a story for later. It is getting late, and all I want to do is tell you that no matter how big the sacrifice is, the reward will always come. I do believe that in myself, which is why I am as old as I am now. I know I did it for my own kind. And I feel exactly the way you do now. But I will not give up, and so should you. He... He takes your hand and is quiet for a long moment. You're much younger than you look, aren't you? Yes. I guess you could say. I did tell Helica back then I was 21. <laughs> I was not lying. The difference between us, though, is that you have a long life ahead of you. No. Don't doubt yourself. I've lived all I wanted to. Spent so many long years trying to escape this debt. I think... I think I'm ready to go. And besides... Charlotte holds tightly. He clutches your hand as well. And besides... Taking that bastard some good news. Some news he'll want to hear anyway. Will keep you lot safe. Shinzo, right? Your name is Shinzo, correct? Yeah. I've heard you beat up Bells and killed Crag. Yeah, I like Bells. Crag, uh... He didn't want to hear what I said, so I figured I could do the same with him as Bells, but, uh... He said he only fight it to the death, and then he tried to back out of it, and I don't like you saying you're going to give me a fight and you don't. Would you do me the honor of a warrior's death? You have my wall. And then he offers a uh, gradiator handshake to him. Targe accepts. And as, as the handshake releases, he undoes the bindings on his targe and hands it to you. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. For the record, the shield is a plus one shield that does not that can be tied to your arm it's a plus one buckler basically you don't have to use a hand on it and it still gives you a plus one to ac well plus two technically and if a uh, if a ranged spell attack would ever miss you you can spend a reaction to reflect it back at the original caster. And then... All right. 
And with that, he takes up a position, picks up a great axe. It's been a while since I've actually swung anything at anyone. You ready for this? <laughs> I was John's ready. still holding his hands. He uh, he gently takes his hands away and kind of gently pushes Charlotte back. Please. I, I will live in your name. Thank you. Okay, uh, real quick, tell me again what the buckle does so I can type it out. Uh, hang on. Plus one buckler of reflection. Acts as a shield that offers plus one to AC, but you don't have to use a hand to hold it. If a ranged spell attack misses you you can spend your reaction to send the spell back at the caster and it's a plus one so technically it's a normal sh so it, mechanically it's a normal shield that you don't have to hold okay so um just go ahead and bump my AC up to 20 then. Sweet. Okay. Your AC ought to be up to... Ought to stay the same, but it gives you a free hand to do stuff with, and you can... Well, uh, I get the... Uh, my fighting style is defense, so I get a plus one to AC when I got a shield. And I always have had a shield out, so that's what made it a 19. Chainmail and then 16. with that being a plus one. Uh, well, uh, now you can uh, two-hand a sword while still having a shield. Yeah. Yeah, but that would drop my AC down to... No, it wouldn't, because you're still period. using a shield. Yep. Oh, yeah, at yeah. plus one. Yep. Okay, sweet. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, I could be <laughs> two-handed and still keep my AC the same. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Alright, I guess let's give him this Royal's death. Alright. Targe stands ready in a very, very powerful stance that you recognize. You've seen many of the martial lords and warlords use it. And he gestures this is to you. be a fight to remember. Yes. Yes, it will. He will pull out his two-handed wall hammer. Are you ready? I'm ready. See you on the other side, my friend. <laughs> yes. Hopefully. And then Shinzo will swing you smash his head in. <laughs> okay. Hey, we got to roll damage? Yeah. Uh, no. As okay. you swing at it, you recognize that his stance completely drops and he leans into your attack. As you smash into the side of his head, he goes spinning and you hear bones cracking. He spins and falls back onto the stairs. <laughs> Take that, you one eyed fuck. <laughs> Orcs are supposed to die on their feet. But I'm taking. I'm taking a warrior's death and dying on my own terms. <laughs> <laughs> and my terms are to die on the ground spiting my god <laughs> Shinzo the keep is yours make me proud 
I'll name it after you. So your name will be remembered. <laughs> What's his name again? Tarn. <laughs> Tarn. <laughs> Darn, the curse of the soul has struck again. His name I picture him Sorry. His name is Targe. It's in T A R G E. T A R G E as in the type of okay. shield he used. Sweet. I feel like after everything stops and it's just complete silence, that's exactly what Shinzo would say. <laughs> what was his name again? <laughs> What's his name again? <laughs> and the whole group would just be like, oh my god, it was told, you fucking idiot. <laughs> well, no, if yeah. that actually happened, my character would actually like bring up like the whole soul curse thing. Yeah. Just to fuck uh, with Shinzo. <laughs> All right, y'all. We are going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Everyone will gain 1,000 experience. And y'all now have a keep. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Time to sink all our money into it instantly. Oh, yes. <laughs> it was funny, though, is I actually just put that in my bio. Tolj Keep, home of Shinzo and the White Crows. Yeah, no, it, it's Tarj Keep now. Tarj Keep. Yes. Okay, uh, who's the be who has the best handwriting? We have to make a sign. Probably Charlotte. All right. I am going to go ahead and wrap up the recording for YouTube here. <sighs> this was a hell of a session. I'm I'm glad we finally yeah, got works. around to this one. Woo! Oh, yeah. That was that was really fun. Yes, it was. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well, lots of laughs. We keep joking that Fighter Man is kind of bland outside of combat. I don't believe that anymore. Yeah. Not this Spider-Man. That was some damn good roleplay, Shinzo. Well done. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually tried, like... I mean, I'm pretty sure y'all have noticed I, I don't really interact much, but that's just yeah. because... One, it takes me a minute to come out of my shell. The only one I know in this group outside of this game, outside that I've known, like, previous to meeting y'all is uh amo that's because yeah. i know his brother like went to mm. school with his brother in real life and stuff so yeah all right but well i let's... think i'm i'm opening it up yeah let's wrap this up y'all good night youtube good night youtube good night peace love coconuts wag <laughs> uh, shun bean you want to say good night night mm. see ya